In every Angular project you work on, I think it's a great idea to come over to the tsconfig.json file and make sure that strict is set to true in the compiler options. Now this is especially true if you are a new hire on a project and want to immediately make friends with your coworkers. May I type my report? It'll be easier on teacher's eye. So as the property suggests, this is going to make TypeScript more strict and complain about your code more. Strict mode basically means more squiggly red lines. This might not sound all that appealing, but TypeScript helps us write better code. So more TypeScript should equal more better code or something like that, right? So whether the TypeScript compiler complains about things or not, those issues still exist in your app. So it's better to be aware of them up front and be able to address them explicitly rather than just crossing your fingers and hoping nothing goes wrong. So let's get to one of the main pain points in Angular of activating strict mode. And one of the most notable changes about enabling strict mode is that TypeScript is going to start complaining about values being null or potentially undefined. And that is what is happening here in my message list component. It says it has no initializer and is not definitely assigned in the constructor. And also in my homepage, it says that I cannot assign this type of message or null to the type message. So the problem here is that we are assuming these values are of a certain type, like a message array in this case, but they might actually be null or undefined at certain times. So let's consider this case of our component receiving some input. We haven't initialized this with some default value. We are relying on passing some value in as input. And once again, we can see that TypeScript is complaining because it doesn't have an initializer and is not definitely assigned in the constructor. So with the way we have this set up, this messages property is going to be undefined when our constructor runs. So even if we do pass that value in when using the component, for example, I'm using the uh, app message list here and I'm passing in this input, the value for this input is still going to be undefined initially because our input will not have been set at the time that our constructor for this component runs. So what TypeScript wants here is for us to provide an initial value so that it does have a value at the time when the constructor runs. So we have at least three options here and what approach you go with might depend on your own personal preference or the specific situation. So the first thing we can do is just to give this property some initial value. So now it's not going to be undefined when the constructor runs. However, as you'll see in a moment, this doesn't solve all of our problems because a null value can still be passed in after this value is initialized. The second approach we could use rather than giving it an initial value is to give it an appropriate type. So right now the problem is that this can potentially be undefined. So if we add in a union type and say that this is going to be a message array or undefined, now TypeScript is going to be happy because both of these values are fine. So now we are explicitly handling this undefined value in this component and it's going to become the responsibility of this component to handle this undefined value. Before we were saying the only possible thing it can be is a message array, so that's all we need to worry about. But now it could be a message array or it could be undefined. So there may be virtues to this approach that I'm unaware of, but I don't use it as I find having to handle the undefined case in the component awkward. And it looks ugly to have every single input have an undefined union type. On top of that, if you also needed to handle null values, you're going to have this sort of you know triple uh, type here of a message undefined and null. And I think this just starts looking pretty ugly and I just don't really like it. So the third option is what I end up doing most of the time. And to be honest, it's probably the most cheaty of the three approaches, but also the most practical, I think. So we can use our little exclamation mark friend here. Uh, this is the non-null assertion operator. So this is basically a way to indicate to the TypeScript compiler that we are confident this will have a non-null value when we try to access it and not to worry about it. So this approach is generally the most convenient, but just be aware that you are losing some safety here. Anytime we override TypeScript and basically say, hey, don't worry about it, I know what I'm doing here. You want to be really sure you know what you are doing and that these values really will be what you expect Otherwise you might get some surprise errors at runtime. So my advice would be to not use the non-null assertion operator just as an escape hatch to you know, solve your problem. Okay, so that was half of this story. TypeScript is happy with our input property now, but what about passing inputs into the component? 
we can see that there are still some problems going on here. So specifically, this is saying that this value we're trying to pass in as an input might be null, and we're trying to assign it to a type of a message array. So if you are trying to pass in some observable value as an input like this, you are always going to run into this problem because according to TypeScript, the observable value always has the potential to be null. Now this isn't strictly true. You can have a synchronous observable stream that emits values immediately and it will never be null because the observable stream will have already emitted. Or we could have some asynchronous observable stream that does not emit a value immediately. So if we're doing something like making an HTTP request, for example, or maybe we just have some kind of delay on the stream, we might be trying to access the value from that observable stream before it's emitted anything and it's going to be null. So even in the first case where our stream values won't ever be null, TypeScript will still assume the value might be null in both cases. So to deal with this, we again have some options. So in this case, I am loading messages from Firestore, which means the stream will not immediately emit a value and so it might actually be null. Now, because I might actually have a null value, I should handle that properly. So what I would do in this case is change my input type to handle the null case. So if I change this to null or I give it the null a union type here along with the message array, if we go back to the template now, you can see that that error has gone away because according to TypeScript, this value might be either a message array or null and our type is message array or null. So this solves the problem in the template and now it is the problem of this messageless component to make sure we are handling that null value. As I mentioned though, the value might never be null. We might know that this stream will always have emitted some non-null value. So in that case, we don't really want to handle the null value in the component. We can again just use that non-null assertion operator to tell TypeScript that the value won't be null. So what we can do is just add some parentheses around this and add the non-null assertion operator. And you can see that immediately gets rid of that squiggly line. We can see that there's no problems with the TypeScript compiler in this template now and also in our component. So the benefit of this approach is that we don't need to add handling for a null value in this component now, but we have another one of those situations where we need to be careful. So we are manually telling TypeScript that this observable stream will always immediately have a value, but if it doesn't and we use this approach, we could get into trouble. And as I mentioned, this stream that I'm trying to use won't immediately have a value. So what I'm doing works, but this is going to cause problems in this specific situation because this value might actually be null and I am telling TypeScript that it won't be. So even though this works in this case, it's going to cause me problems. And so I should have gone with the other approach where I use the null union type instead and I don't use the non-null assertion operator. So these are not the only issues that TypeScript strict mode will highlight in your application, but it is something that will pop up constantly in Angular apps. So it's definitely important to know what options you have here. But I think this is the great thing about strict mode is that it does highlight these potential issues which otherwise go unnoticed. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, if you liked it and you felt like leaving a like or subscribe, that would be very much appreciated. I hope the TypeScript compiler always treats you well and I will see you in the next video.